Good evening, friends. We welcome you tonight to the 40th Hymn Sing. We want to tell you how great it is to have you tonight. The air conditioning was set at 60 at 1 p.m., and it's doing the best it can. So just smile, fan yourself with your paper or something. Anyway, it's the one, here's the nice thing. It's better than outside. You know, there's always something positive that we can say. Tonight, our theme is Songs of the Sea, and the Bible is replete with references to the sea, and especially to the Sea of Galilee, which we're also going to be talking about tonight. We want to ask you, if you would, please, if you have a cell phone or any other electronic device, please turn it off or put it on vibrate. We want to especially welcome those who have joined us from the outside or from the healthcare center. We're glad that you have joined us tonight as you're watching on the World Wide Web. Glad that you're here. Well, friends, are you ready to sing? Are you ready to listen? And we're looking forward to a good evening tonight. We are delighted that you're here. We invite you now at the sound of the chimes to have a period of quiet when we enjoy the instrumental music together.
evening. Let us reflect responsibly reading the scripture regarding our theme for the evening, Songs of the Sea, reading from Psalm 107, verses 23 through 31. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters. For he spoke and raised up a stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. Their soul melted away in their misery. And then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distresses. And then they were glad, because they were quiet, and so he guided them on their desired onto their desired haven. Thank you. Don McNeil will now lead us in our opening song. Yep. Shall we bow in prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for this anchor that you gave to us in your son, Jesus Christ. 
We thank you for the families that have come through that particular issue of you starting families and we becoming the family of God. Our children, we ask you to guide them as they guide their families. And tonight as we come inspiringly singing the, what the poets have written that you have inspired, we ask you to bless these songs that we sing about your, about your creation. And as we sing these songs, that we will join together and become a family of God as we are united to you in joyful song and praise to you as we worship you in song. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, we welcome you tonight. We're glad that you're here. And we want to again give a special welcome to those who have joined us from outside Palm Village. This hymn sing is coming to you from Palm Village in Reedley, California. So wherever you are uh, across the United States or the nations of the world, because we know there are people watching, uh, we welcome you to join with us. I hope wherever you are, it's cooler than it is here uh, in the Central Valley of California. It's over 100 degrees outside. Anyway, for those of you who are here, thank you for being here, for singing, for joining with us tonight. We were just led in prayer by our brother Don Dick, who is a resident here. Tonight, our soloist is our good friend Kathy Albrecht. We always look forward to her ministry. And then Dr. Ken Royer is here to share with us the word tonight. Uh, Ken is the director of missionary care at Link Care in Fresno. And you know, I was just thinking, uh, Ken, years and years ago when I lived in Fresno, I had a really dear friend, and he and his wife were uh, missionaries with the Christian and Missionary Alliance, and they were in Asia, and they got into some problems. But I tell you what, Link Care helped them so much when they came home, and it was just a pleasure to see what God did uh, in their hearts and lives. So again, we welcome you. Thank you for being here. Next hymn, right? Jesus, Savior, Pilot, me. Here we go. Second verse, let's have the ladies sing the second, uh, first li second line. The second line, all men join them on the second. Here we go. Once again, reading responsibly from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 15. And he, that is God, gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature person. To the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. 
And as a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness in deceitful scheming. Thank you, Dr. Royer. When our family gathers together for Christmas or Thanksgiving, probably like in your family, the question comes up, do you remember when? And then unfolds a chapter of our lives that bring us back in touch with the reality of our parents and grandparents who've gone before us. The year was 1894. Our grandparents, Wilbur and Mary Stover, responded to the Lord's leading to go to India as pioneer missionaries with the Church of the Brethren. Back to our Christmas saying, do you remember when? One of the questions is often, do you remember when grandparents almost were on the Titanic? And the story goes back to 1912 when grandparents were returning for furlough from India looking forward to a time with loved ones back in the United States. And our understanding is that grandparent, the grandfather really wanted to get to England quickly so that they could book passage on the Titanic. <laughs> Thankfully, they were delayed and missed the boat. So when I say I'm glad to be here, <laughs> mother was three, and I sure am glad that God oversaw that time. And, they came on over to America, but back to the Titanic. On the Titanic was a missionary, single lady, Annie Funk is her name. Annie Funk and my grandparents had become good friends in Bombay, India. And Annie, in fact, had helped grandfather at some point when he was very ill in Bombay. She also was re returning for furlough and did get passage on the Titanic. And when it struck the iceberg, she was awakened by the steward, said, hurry up, get dressed, come up on board and get on the lifeboat. And so she hurried up and was just about ready to step onto the lifeboat. When an Italian lady came up and said, I've got to get to New York. My parents have not seen my children. Won't somebody give me a place on the lifeboat? And he stepped back. She said, here, take my place. So she went down with the ship. When grandparents arrived in New York, I understand that they went down to Pennsylvania met with her parents, had fellowship together, and we can only imagine what they talked about and the time of rejoicing when they anticipate being together around the throne. If you're interested in reading more about Annie Funk, you can look under google.com, Annie Funk Titanic, and it's there. Very interesting, and 100 years later, Mary and I had the privilege in 1997, Mary and I had the privilege of going to India and visiting where grandparents had labored for 25 years. When our grandparents had gone to that spot, there was nothing of an evangelical witness. So like going out here to the desert where nothing has grown for years, you begin to dig up the soil and you put in topsoil and water and fertilizer and plant and do a lot of praying, pretty soon things begin to grow. And now, instead of nothing of an evangelical witness, 100 years later, there were more than 4,000 believers, 15 churches, and 16 preaching points. So we praise God for his goodness. Being asked to speak tonight for five minutes with the theme of oceans and waters, my thoughts went back to people who have sacrificed a lot for the sake of the gospel. Our Lord's command 
just before ascension, was go into all the world and preach the gospel. And uh, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Sometimes we tease and we say, that's why it's not good to be in an airplane. Because the Lord said, lo, I am with you always. <laughs> <laughs> May we always be willing to serve him in whatever he leads in our own ways and the open doors that he gives us. Amen. Ken, we thank you so much for sharing with us. That was just wonderful. It encouraged our hearts. At hymn sing, besides singing hymns, we like to sing some old-time choruses, too. And we always start with heavenly sunshine. Now, I'm not too keen on that today. But <laughs> it's, uh, it's still a good song. Sing it twice. Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine, flooding my soul with love and divine. Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine, hallelujah, Jesus is mine. Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine, flooding my soul with love and divine. Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine, hallelujah. The Haven of Rest. You know, when I was a little kid, my grandmother would always be listening to that on the radio. And I feel like we need the ship's signal, you know, and the little, the little chimes and the whole thing, and first mate Bob to tell us that it's, everything's okay, it's ready to go. Well, this song speaks of the Lord Jesus, that he is our haven of rest. Would you sing with me? My soul in sad exile was out on life's sea. sing a nice old time chorus wide wide is the ocean how many people remember that okay we're going to do it twice so you can get the idea the first time through okay i had to actually get out the music for this i couldn't remember the whole thing okay here we go wide, wide is the ocean. Wide.
just sing just the chorus of Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. And one of my friends said, what does that have to do with the sea? And I said, well, of course. Let's, uh, the sea billows roll. Okay, but here's what I want you to do. When we get that, floods of joy on my soul like the sea billows roll. We're going to roll the billows, okay? All right, here we go. Since, ready? Here we go. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy on my soul. you did a good job of rolling the billows. Those are the songs we have selected for you tonight. Now, if you would take the green hymnal, and it's your turn to pick them. I always forget to tell some of the things. Let's see. We usually sing just one verse in the interest of time. If you don't want the first verse, please say so. Um, sometimes I'll decide we're going to do something else. Uh, if I don't know it, you have to lead it. What's the other rules? I think that's it. Oh, you can't be polite. Right. Who said that? Was it Chris Holman? I knew it. <laughs> He's really pretty polite, but you know. At him sing, you just tell out the number and we'll do our best. And our brother John Lowen will put the number up on the screen. Okay, who's ready? 142. 142. All right, we're ready to go. 142. This will make us feel cooler since it's a Christmas song. Here we go. There's a song in the air. There's a star in the sky. There's a mother's deep prayer. And the baby's low cry. And the star raises its fire while the beautiful sing. For the manger of Bethlehem and cradles of One hundred eighty-three. One eight three. All right. Now we're singing Easter song. We're making progress. Is that not working, John? Okay. All right. He's working. I interrupted the the Sabbath, but what is it? It's the Lord's Day. And every Lord's Day throughout the year is a re-celebration of Easter. Because Jesus rose not on the Sabbath, but when? The first day of the week. Sunday morning. All right. I had to give my little pitch in there. Who's next? 314. 314. Let's do it without the piano. Sing parts. Here we go. Ready? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest strain, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. friends. Let's go over to this side. Who has one over there? Four, two, three. And be sure to correct me if I say the wrong number, all right? Someone do it. Say, no, stop, stop. Let's do this without the piano. 
Ready? When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and I have to tell you something funny. I won't say who told me this, but someone who's here every month. And they said, you know, when we're singing with everyone, uh, without the piano, everybody's singing parts, I just stop singing because I want to listen to it. And I said, well, that's real precious, but somebody better keep singing. <laughs> you know, we're going to have nothing going out over the airwaves here. <laughs> somebody has to sing. OK, who's ready? 436. 436. again? 174. 65. This is one that I wanted to put in because it's a good, you know, it would go with the theme, but it, we didn't have a place. So anyway, here we go. Ready?
Sorry, soprano, sorry, Kathy. <laughs> okay, and I'll give you the trumpets before. Okay, here's the trumpets. Ready?
if you don't mind, let's pause for just a moment. Kathy, would you come on up and prepare to sing? Before she does, we're going to read the scriptural account of Jesus in the boat uh, on the Sea of Galilee. You know, that uh, sea figures so prominently in the ministry of Jesus and in the history of Israel. Uh, it's also known as Tiberias, uh, Gennesaret, uh, what's the other one, Kinneret, yes. Much of Jesus' ministry happened near the Sea of Galilee. So as we prepare, John, would you prepare the scripture reading and, and let's go to that one. I, I, J Kathy's going to sing uh, Stranger of Galilee and I'd like us to read this scripture before she does, just so we have it in our minds. Here we go. I'll begin, and then if you'll respond. And when Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and it became perfectly calm. And
Thank you, Kathy. What a blessing. Does that lady know how to communicate a song? You know? All right. Back to singing. Who's ready? Okay, I heard 480. Was that right? Okay. 480 and then 420. Right? Okay, 480. I can, I can remember that because they're both even numbers and they're multiples of 20, you know. <laughs> My brain works that way. <laughs> okay, here we go in the sweet by and by. Ready? There's a land that is fair. Cheering song. I like that. Who else? 513. 513. Now, you should have this in your mind already because Mary Jane and I played this as the very first piece of the prelude, right? And this is a great missionary song, in it, but it has that C feeling. You know, throw out the lifeline to someone who's sinking away. Here we go. Throw out the lifeline across the dark web. There is a brother whom someone should say. Somebody's brother, oh, who then will dare to throw out the lifeline his peril to share. Throw out the lifeline. Say it again. 110. 110, is that right? Yeah. All right, 110. Yeah. 
two more songs, and then I'm going to tell you a story. Who's ready? 579. Okay, 579. That's the first one. Okay, let's turn there. 579. This is a nice short song. It's a children's song, so if you don't mind, let's sing the whole thing, okay? When he cometh, when he cometh to make of his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his love and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, he shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Let me tell you a story. If you will take the paper that was on your seat when you came in, the song is not in our book, and I wanted you to be able to sing the parts if you'd like to. Our story tonight is Let the Lower Lights Be Burning. Now, if we presented that in church, in any church in Fresno or really anywhere, any Sunday morning, I'm not a betting person, but if I were... 99.99% .99 of the people would say, what in the world is that and what is it about? <laughs> okay, how many people know this song sort of from the past? Okay, some of you do. All right. I know it. I know the melody, but I didn't remember the story. And it's the story that really makes it have punch and, and uh, speaks to our hearts. Of course, this is a hymn of the sea. That's why I picked it naturally for tonight. Both the words and the music were written by the same person, Philip P. Bliss. He was born in 1838. He died in 1876. And I'm going to tell you some hymns, and I know you'll know them. Here are some of his hymns. Almost Persuaded, Whosoever Will May Come, Dare to Be a Daniel, Free from the Law, O Happy Condition, Wonderful Words of Life, uh, The Light of the World is Jesus. Now here's something interesting. He wrote the music to It Is Well With My Soul. 
You remember the man Spafford whose daughters and went down, he wrote the words, but Bliss wrote the music. He wrote, More Holiness Give Me, uh, Jesus Loves Even Me, and many, many others. When he was young, he worked in sawmills and lumber camps. After he got more education, he became a teacher, and he later became a gospel singer and an evangelist. In the year 1869, he joined D.L. Moody as his soloist and song leader. Well, there's something to note right there. You know, that's important. Uh, in 1876, Bliss and his wife were on a train trip, and I think I might have told you about him with some other song. Anyway, as the train was crossing a deep gorge, uh, the trestle collapsed, and the whole train fell into the gorge and caught fire. Now, Bliss was able to escape the wreckage, but he crawled back inside in order to rescue his wife, and neither one of them were ever found because the whole thing burned so completely after that. Now, here's something else interesting. In his travel trunk were the words to, I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. So he wrote just the words to that one. That's his only song that he didn't also write the music because he died. But they found that. Isn't that great to think of that? In his trunk, I will sing of, his, of my Redeemer. Well, here's the story now of him we're talking about. During one of Moody's evangelistic meetings, Philip Bliss was directing the singing. As Moody closed the message, he told about the upper lights and the lower lights, which were situated on many American harbors at that time. The upper light always came from a lighthouse. The lower lights were on the ground. In order for ships to safely enter the harbor, the two lights needed to be aligned, the lighthouse light and the, the light down on the ground. Moody told the story of a ship's captain who was attempting to bring his vessel into the Cleveland, Ohio Harbor one stormy night. The waves were rolling like mountains and not a star was visible in the dark sky. The boat was rocking and rolling on the violent waves and the captain peered through the darkness to try to see the lights that would guide his ship to safety. When he finally spotted the upper light from the lighthouse, he turned to the pilot and asked. Now, here's the direct quote from Moody. Are you sure this is Cleveland Harbor? Quite sure, the pilot replied. Then where are the lower lights? The captain continued. Gone out, sir, the other man answered. Can you make the harbor? The captain asked anxiously. We must or perish, the pilot replied. But despite their combined efforts in the dark storm, they missed the channel. The boat crashed on rocks, and many lives were lost. Now, here's the punch. As that congregation listened intently to D.L. Moody, he concluded with this admonition to Christians. Brothers and sisters, our master will take care of the great gospel lighthouse above. But it is our responsibility to be his witnesses here in the world and to keep the lower lights burning brightly for him. Now, isn't that meaningful? And so right after that service, Bliss sat down like some of us do. We want to write out a song quick. And he wrote the hymn that we're going to sing this evening to remind us as Christians to be lights in the world. God is the gospel light above. We're the lower lights. So let the lower lights be burning. Let me play it through for you in case you forgot how it goes.
Once again, we want to thank you for coming tonight and for those of you who have watched us uh, in the healthcare center and wherever else you might be in this world, we're glad you were with us too. The next hymn sing is, is July the 16th. We will pray for cooler weather. But don't hold your breath. <laughs> the title that night is When Old Songs Become New. So you can think about that for a while and wonder where we're going with that. Our special music will be the male quartet from the North Fresno Mennonite Brethren Church. And Dr. Larry Martins will be the speaker, and he's also in that quartet. We want to thank all those who have helped us tonight. We're so appreciative. We never could do it with just one or two people. We want to thank Don Dick, who led us in the opening prayer. And Dr. Royer, thank you so much for blessing our hearts with your words. Our dear sister Kathy, thank you for ministering to us in song. Don Beckenauer, who did our readings, and Don McNeil, our song leader, who's not finished yet. <laughs> he still has another one. Our keyboard players, uh, Mary Jane Lepp Dick, Marianne Heinrichs, we thank you for being with us. You know, you have to be brave to come and play for the big hymn scene, and she was brave to come and help us tonight, so thank you. We miss Wanda. You know, it left a hole, but you know, God is so gracious because he raises up other people, and we're thankful for that. So, Mary Jane, Mary Ann, myself on the organ. Our visuals, as always, were done wonderfully by John and Norma Lowen, our brother Eddie Newfeld at the soundboard. Don Becker and our again, we thank you for leading the ushers. And our friend Drew Maddox back there with the stylish glasses who is doing the YouTube video. You can always find the hymn sing after you go home if you want to. You just go into your computer's browser and you put in Palm Village Hymn Sing and you'll get this whole long list of them. Every one of them from back, who knows when, since we first started doing this. So if you want to look at it. That, and we appreciate Drew's work because he really does a lot of effort. At the conclusion tonight, we'd like to ask you if you're able to take your book back to the cart over in that corner. And then, of course, allow extra time for those with walkers and wheelchairs for those who need to go out first. Would you sing enthusiastically after Brother McNeil leads us in prayer? Let's bow together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the joy that's in our hearts tonight. It's truly good and wonderful and refreshing and inspiring to sing hymns of praise and thanksgiving to the one who is our Savior, our Redeemer, our soon and coming King. So we just thank you for the time together. Thank you for each one who has come each one who has participated. And above all, thank you, Lord, for being who you are, what you've done in our lives. And we're going to thank and praise you for all the good things that are ours because of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. And we ask your blessing as we dismiss with God's people saying, Amen. Amen.